Hi, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for watching and for subscribing. And if you're just visiting, please consider subscribing. So as you saw by the title, today's video is a haul and I'm going to share with you three very special and interesting fragrances from two houses that are connected and related. Uh, I see a lot of male reviewers on YouTube talking about these houses, but I haven't seen a lot of female reviewers talking about them. And so I really wanted to try a few fragrances from these houses and to share my impressions and my opinions about them with you. So let's get started. The first house that I'm going to talk about is Tiziana Terenzi. This is an Italian house. It was established in 1968 and originally it was a house that mainly produced candles. Currently it is owned by Tiziana and Paolo Terenzi, who are brother and sister, I believe. Tiziana is the designer and Paolo is the nose of this house, so he creates um, all of the fragrances. So the first one I'm going to show with you is called Al Contrario and it was released in 2000. And so I have to show share the packaging with you first. It is very beautiful and very lavish and definitely niche quality, I think. So here's the box. You open the top. Obviously, Ooh, the bottle is sitting here. So there are some booklets in here that come talking about the fragrance, uh, this particular one and the other fragrances in the collection. And then here's back to the bottle. You take it out. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see but here inside there is a little small cap that can be used instead of this big cap on top. I'm not going to be able to take it out right now, but believe me that it's there. And so this is the cap and the fragrance is actually in here. I think I have 50 ml in here. So I'm going to read to you a little bit about this fragrance. I mean the description from, um, from actually Tiziana Terenzi, uh, because I think it beautifully describes the inspiration behind this fragrance. And then we're gonna talk about the notes and my impressions about it. So, al contrario, the Tiziana Terenzi collection has always been inspired by travel and experiences related to fire. Al contrario tells of the return journey. This refined perfume is not for everyone. It was created on a subtle balance, an almost nostalgic feeling of longing that falls somewhere between the sweetness of vanilla and the contrast of malt and cacao pods. So what are the notes in this one? So the top notes are malt, ebony wood, cacao pods, um, stone powder. Middle notes are vanilla, orchids, tonka beans, and base notes are sandalwood, cane sugar, benzoin, and hazelnut. Okay, so what does it smell like to me? This is a beautiful fragrance. It is sweet, but it is not too sweet. It is chocolatey, but not too chocolatey. It is definitely sophisticated kind of gourmand. I think it is definitely unisex. I can totally see a man wearing this as well as a woman, of course. I think it is suitable for any occasion and at any time of the year. It is very cozy and at the same time, it is very romantic. Like if you were having a date by the fireplace, I think this would be a great scent for that. It is, what I really like about it is it is very realistic smelling. Um, there is some Tiziana Terenzi fragrances that have very syn synthetic smell, at least to me. I know one of the probably most uh, popular scents from this house is Kirky. I don't know if I pronounce it correctly. Um, 
and I've tried it, I've sampled it, and to me, it's definitely a no-go. It's very synthetic smelling to me. Not this one, very, very realistic smell. It is beautifully blended together. You can tell that uh, the ingredients in here are very high quality. It is very soft. You can smell benzoin and cacao and vanilla and orchid comes out more on a dry down. You can definitely smell hazelnut. It is very creamy. Overall, the feeling that it gives me is it's a smell of bakery, but not the type of bakery where um, they make like um, desserts, like cakes or anything like that. It's more like a bakery where they make bread. That's kind of the feeling that I get when I smell this. Now, I've read some reviews saying that this is similar to Xerge of Lyra, and I can definitely see where they're coming from. There are definitely similarities. I think if you like Lyra, you're going to like this one as well. The difference I would say is that Lyra is more sweet. This has a little bit less sweetness. It is kind of more subdued sweetness. And also Lyra has um, citrusy note. I think it has maybe orange, although to me it's, it, it smells more lemony. This one doesn't really have any citruses in this. That's the difference between the two. But the vibe of the two is definitely similar. So again, this is Al Contrario from Tiziana Terenzi. This is absolutely stunning. Second one I'm going to share with you is from the house of Quinto Canto. And this is actually a sister brand to Tiziana Terenzi. This brand was also created by Paolo Terenzi and he is the nose behind the brand. And uh, I think they were created in 2015 and they have around 20, 21 fragrances in their catalog. The scent that I chose is called Lucretia. Again, very stunning packages, packaging. So you take this off and then you unwind the string here. Okay, maybe. Okay, then you open it up and the bottle is in here. I mean, beautiful. Let's take out the bottle. There's also a little booklet with all the information that comes in here. So here is the actual bottle. Again, this is called Lucretia. So the notes in Lucretia, top notes, are pink pepper, lime blossom, pedigree. Mid no middle notes are jasmine, coffee, cloves, cacao, and amber. And base notes are cedar, patchouli, vanilla, benzoin, and honeysuckle. So what does it smell like? Well, it's sweet white florals, florals with addition of benzoin and hazelnut. I smell a very prominent note of jasmine in here. It is sweet, but again, again, not too sweet. I think this can be worn in the summer as well. I definitely smell honeysuckle in here. It comes through. It is creamy. It has really great lasting power. This is very feminine. And this is the fragrance that I mentioned in my forgotten favorites video. When I was talking about black opium, I said that I found a dupe that smells very, very similar but has a much better lasting power. This is the dupe, Lucretia from Quinto Canto. Maybe all the notes are definitely not the same, but it is, when you spray it, it is extremely similar to Black Opium. And that's why I think this would be a mass appealing scent. If you like Black Opium or scents that are similar to that, you will like this one. To me, it is extremely similar. Maybe it is slightly less sweet and jasmine note is a little bit more pronounced in this one, but overall it is very similar. So 
As I mentioned before, I love the smell of black opium, but I hardly ever wear it because it just doesn't last on me at all, at all. So this one is stunning and has great lasting power. So I'm really liking this one as well. Okay, and the last one is kind of the star of the show, in my opinion, not that the other two were not good, they were definitely great, but there's something um, extra special about the third one. So the third one is also from the house of Tiziana Terenzi. And I have been looking at this fragrance and researching this fragrance for a while, really couldn't decide if I wanted um, to try it. And then recently, I saw a review by Anandita Basu. I hope I pronounced the name correctly. Please forgive me if I didn't. She is a beautiful reviewer. If you haven't seen her channel, definitely check it out. She has this amazing, calming demeanor to her and I just love the way she describes fragrances. And she recently held this fragrance and was reviewing it. And um, one of the things that she mentioned is that it kind of, gave her um, similar vibes to Lancome's Roses Berberanza, which I absolutely love. And when I heard that, I thought, yeah, I'm definitely going to get it. Now, do I think it's similar to Roses Berberanza? Well, stay tuned, I'm gonna tell you. So what is the fragrance I'm talking about? I'm talking about Porpora. So here's the box, another stunning box. Let's open it. Okay, again, there are booklets in here talking about this fragrance and the other ones in the collection. And look at this gorgeous, gorgeous red bottle. Again, inside, I don't know if you can see, there is a little um, cap. If you don't wanna use this one, like if you're taking it somewhere, then you can use this small cap. I've heard people talking about this bottle, saying how heavy they are. And I didn't realize just how heavy they are until I held it in my hand. It is extremely heavy. And most of the heaviness is coming from the cap. It is very, very heavy. Like it's huge. I understand why they give you the little cap because you can't take this bottle anywhere. But of course the look of it is absolutely stunning. So this fragrance came out in 2017. And again, I'm gonna read you just a little something from the actual house describing this fragrance. So Porpora, the creation is inspired by the magnificence of the famous red moon, which sometimes leaps out in a sudden fiery ball of light from behind the horizon, alarm, enthrallment, excitement, and wonder when faced with so much magnificence are all enclosed in this precious creation, which opens with a bold top note provided by the Rose Absolu, surrounded by uh, wild forest raspberries and spices, such as cinnamon and cloves. So it mentions the notes a little bit already, but let me just quickly read all of the notes. Um, the top notes are Rose Absolu, um, osmanthus, raspberry, cinnamon, cloves. Middle notes are Bulgarian rose, uh, poppy, incense, and patchouli. The writing here is very small, very hard to see. <laughs> Sorry. Um, base notes are um, chestnut, wood, amber, musk, and myrrh. Okay, so what do I think about this scent? And by the way, this scent, uh, many reviewers compare to Frederick Mal's uh, Portrait of a Lady, which uh, if you watched my fragrance house tag, you know that I'm really, really interested in trying that fragrance, but I just don't feel ready for it. Like, I don't feel like I'm cool enough to try that one. But, and so when I read that this one is very similar by many reviews, I thought, yeah, that's, I really want to try this one. So let's see. This is, let's start with the fact that this is a rose fragrance. Um, it is smoky, dark rose. It has spicy patchouli in it. It is a little bit 
earthy and resinous. It is definitely very seductive and it sort of gives me the dangerous vibe. Uh, this makes a statement. I don't think this is a fragrance for a young girl. I think this is a fragrance for confident, successful woman. I think this, I think this is unisex. Um, although a little more feminine leaning than masculine, but overall unisex. Um, this is definitely not a day scent. This is an evening scent. Like if you're going somewhere to a big event or you're going to some kind of fancy club, I don't know, I think this will be good. So the other question is, is it similar to Roses by Bronza? Yes and no. Uh, I find slight similarity um, to the opening of Roses by Bronza, which is a little bit kind of sour, slightly, slightly nutty opening. I mean, after a while, Roses by Bronza settles into this beautiful, sweet, jammy rose but the beginning is very different. And this slightly reminds me of the beginning of Roses for Bronza. That's where for me, similarities end. I think this is a, a very different, overall, this is a very different scent, but I absolutely love it. When I first sprayed it, it kind of took me by surprise. I think I was expecting something a little bit different, maybe a little bit um, less smoky and a little bit more sweet. So it took me about 30 seconds sort of to wrap my brain about what I was smelling. And when I did, this is outstanding, absolutely outstanding. This is so beautiful. It makes such a statement. It is such a different type of rose. I love it, but I would not recommend it as a blind buy. This is not your simple everyday kind of rose. So definitely sample it before you buy it, but I love it. And this is going to be something very special in my collection. So let me put the cap back on and show you the full beauty of this bottle. So that's it for this haul. These are the three fragrances that I wanted to short to share with you and give you my first impressions about them. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you've tried anything from these two houses and if you're interested in trying anything. If you like this video, please remember to subscribe and give me a thumbs up and I will see you soon in my next video. Bye.